Good afternoon, Mama Howard and, and the rest of the members of the state family. Eric, thank you so much for that uh, introduction and for your strong and steady leadership. I want to begin by welcoming all of our alumni back home for homecoming. I am humbled to stand before you today as the 13th president of West Virginia State University. You know, when I arrived in July of 2021, there was no way to predict the journey that we would embark upon as a campus community together. But here we are today, and I am happy to report that not only is the state of our university strong, but, the, that, but that we are more hopeful than we have been ever before. What we have achieved together is nothing short of remarkable. But what we will accomplish together in the months and years ahead is even more so. No leader, and I do mean no leader, can stand alone. It takes a strong team of professionals to move a university forward. So this afternoon, before I go any further, I want to take a moment and recognize several leaders that are here with us today. Leaders that are helping us to transform our university. Please hold your applause until after I introduce everyone. I want to start with members of the Board of Governors. Governors, would you please stand and remain standing? I would also like to recognize members of the West Virginia State University Foundation Board of Directors who are here with us today. Would you please stand and remain standing? With the officers of the National Alumni Association, please stand and remain standing. Members of the state, West Virginia State University Board of Visitors, would you please stand? Ladies and gentlemen, these leaders help to propel our university forward. Please join me in giving them a well-deserved round of applause. Next, I would like to recognize the remarkable team of higher education professionals that are helping to propel us to our next level of greatness. Please join me in recognizing the university's executive leadership team, what I like to call the A-team, members of my cabinet. First, I'd like to recognize our provost and vice president for academic affairs, Dr. Paige Carney. Please remain standing until I call all the names. Vice President and Chief of Staff, Eric Jackson. Vice President for Business and Finance, Justin McAllister. Vice President for Enrollment Management and Student Affairs, Dr. Stacy Soule. Vice President for University Advancement, Patricia Schumann. Vice President and Dean and Director for Agricultural Research and Extension, Dr. Amy Smith, Athletic Director, Nate Burden, and certainly last but not least, General Counsel Alice Fawcett. Please join me in giving these leaders a round of applause. That's a pretty good looking team, isn't it? <laughs> Note that my picture's not there. The academic enterprise is the heart of our institution. And now I want to recognize the dedicated team of leaders who are working alongside Provost Carney to deliver on our commitment to ex educational excellence. When I call your name, please stand and remain standing until all names are called. Dr. Michael Fultz, Associate Provost and Associate Vice President for Academic Affairs. And of course, our deans, 
Dr. Kerry Steele, Dean of the College of Professional Studies. Dr. Robert Wallace, Dean of the College of Arts and Humanities. Deborah Williams, Dean of the College of Business and Social Sciences. And Dr. Naveed Zaman, Dean of the College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics. Please join me in giving our academic leaders a round of applause. <laughs> Shared governance is critical to the success of any university, and this university is no different. So next, I would like to recognize members of our university's shared governance team. Would you please stand and be recognized? First, Dr. Jessica Barnes Petrozinski, Chair of the Faculty Senate. Mrs. Robin Tabor, Chair of the Staff Council. Ms. Miriam Raywash, Student Government Association President. Please join me in giving these leaders a round of applause. <laughs> and finally, I would like to recognize our local and state elected and appointed officials who are with, here with us today. I see sitting in the front row, State Senator Richard Lindsay, would you please stand? Brian Aloise from the United States Senator Joe Manchin's office, would you please stand? Are there others in the room who represent elected or appointed officials? Please join me in giving these leaders a hand of applause. And finally, I would like for all of you to stand. All of you to stand. <laughs> because the truth of the matter is, that all of us are leaders. All of us are responsible for the hard but necessary work of propelling this university forward. So please, give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you. As I am fond of saying, it takes a village to raise a child and to sustain a university. And everyone who I just introduced as well as everyone in this room and across our campus has a critical role to play in supporting the success of this place we love so dear. This past year has truly been a remarkable one. I want you to think about where we were 15 months ago, what the university had been through in terms of leadership transitions, where we and the world were with the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and the economic and societal upheaval that it forced upon us all. It would have been easy for us to give up, but that's not what happened. We persevered. We met our challenges head on, and today we are stronger as a university and as a community. The state spirit is one of resilience, and I see it every day in our classrooms, in the dining hall, out on the quad, and throughout our community. This is a place where we help each other for the benefit of us all. And because of this, the story of what we have accomplished together in the past year is nothing short of extraordinary. This afternoon, I want to spend a few minutes reflecting on our successes because they most definitely deserve to be celebrated. Even during a period of unprecedented challenge, our university has risen to new heights. For example, West Virginia State University was ranked the number four HBCU in the nation by college consensus for 2022. Our heritage as a historically black 1890 land grant institution sets us apart from our peers and provides our students, faculty, and staff with incredible opportunities. Throughout the university's 131-year history, academic excellence has served as our North Star. Over this past year, we have continued this tradition of academic excellence. For example, 
our undergraduate teacher preparation program received an A plus designation from the National Council of Teacher Quality. Other program recognitions include the university's Masters of Science and Criminal Justice Administration degree program, which was ranked the eighth best in the nation. Moreover, the university's Masters of Education and Instructional Leadership degree program was ranked the third best in the country. The university's Department of Social Work was awarded a grant for more than $300,000 to help address COVID-19 disparities in rural areas of West Virginia. And while our existing degree programs are already having a tremendous impact, we are launching new degree programs to continue to serve the needs of our state and region. The university launched a new interdisciplinary studies degree program, giving students greater flexibility in crafting an academic program that aligns with their personal and career goals. We are also planning to bring our first doctorate degree program in educational leadership to the university, the first in our 131-year history. We have some of the best and brightest people in the entire country right here on our campus. And I'm going to take just a moment to share some of these impressive stories with you today. To begin with, our very own Associate Provost and Associate Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Michael Foltz, has been named the 2021 Professor of the Year for the State of West Virginia by the Faculty Merit Foundation. If you spend any, any time with Dr. Folks, you know that his love for chemistry and his passion for teaching, teaching is infectious. Dr. Folks' recognition marks the first time, the first time that a professor from West Virginia State University has been recognized with this prestigious award. But I know it will not be the last. So please, Dr. Folks, would you please stand and join me in giving him another round of applause. This past summer, the university was awarded a highly competitive $650,000 grant from the United States Department of Agriculture to conduct agricultural research that will enhance crop yield. Dr. Sanjay Sanjaya, principal investigator and the West Virginia State University Director of Energy and Environmental Science and his team will lead this project to find a way to repurpose, reclaim surface mine land left over from coal mining. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Sanjay and his team for the cutting edge research in this emerging field. <laughs> the university was also awarded a $100,000 grant from NASA for a research project that investigates the adaptability of sweet potatoes as a potential crop that could be grown on Mars. Biology professor Dr. Umesh Reddy and his team will lead the project, which has a long-term goal of developing a program that educates, encourages, engages students in, in participating in NASA-related biology activities. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Reddy and his team for their work. And those were just a few examples of the outstanding work that our faculty are doing in their classrooms and in their laboratories on a daily basis. But not only are, are our faculty members excelling, our students are also excelling as well. Our students' accomplishments are second to none. For example, junior criminology major Cedric Cachada. <laughs> you can go ahead and clap. <laughs> <laughs> Junior criminology major Cedric Cachada was selected to be a 2022 HBCU scholar by the White House Initiative on HBCUs. Cedric was one of only 85 students from across the country selected for this honor 
And I had the opportunity to spend time with him in Washington, D.C. as part of National HBCU Week. And I can tell you that he is a very impressive young man who represents this university very well. So congratulations, Cedric. Another student leader is computer science major Zimbrin Dixon, one of only six students from around the country selected for the first cohort of Stanford University's Computer Science, Leadership, Inclusion, Networks, Zenacious, and Support Program. That's a mouthful. Zimbrin spent her summer at Stanford University participating in this immersive program. West Virginia State University is at the forefront of helping to diversify the pipeline of STEM graduates. And Zimran is a great example of this work. Zimran, if you're here, please stand so that we may <laughs> recognize you. Another student I want to, to highlight is graduate student Denise Camille, who was selected by the National Association of Plant Breeders as a 2022 Borlaug Scholar based upon its accomplishments, academic performance, and passion for plant breeding. Denise was one of only 16 graduate students in this year's highly competitive class of scholars from across the country. Denise, if you're here, please stand and be recognized. <laughs> Two West Virginia State University graduate students were selected as fellows for West Virginia Public Broadcasting's Inside Appalachia Folkways Project. Lachey Lee and Angelica Willis were selected for the fellowships which provide students with hands-on reporting skills and generates content highlighting African-American folk life, arts, and culture in Appalachia. Please give these two students a round of applause. For the 12th consecutive year, West Virginia State University student chapter of the American Chemical Society has been named a Green Chemistry Student Chapter Award winner. The student group was also recognized by the National ACS organization with a commendable chapter award for the programs and activities they put on during the year. WVSU's ACS chapter is comprised of more than 25 students and is one of the most active student organizations on campus. And two West Virginia State University students participated in the launch of a NASA suborbital rocket in June at the Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. Perry Martin and Nicholas Freeman designed experiments to be launched as part of the Rockstat C program, which allows college students to build their own experimental payloads, which are then launched on a NASA rocket. West Virginia State University continues to be a destination of choice for high achieving scholars. This summer, I was happy to present presidential scholarships to two such students, Noah Jordan from Cabell Midland High School and Delaney Machado from Nitro High School. These two freshman student athletes could have gone anywhere, but they chose to come here to West Virginia State University because of the access and opportunity that we provide them. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you are here, Delaney and Noah, please stand. Let's give them a round of applause. It should be exceedingly clear from these examples that this is a community of visionary thinkers and builders who work each and every day to harness the transformative power of education to make this state, this region, and our country a better place. Innovation is what drives us here at West Virginia State University. And we are committed to providing students with the best resources and experiences they need to support the jobs of the 21st century economy. For example, West Virginia State University was awarded a more than $700,000 grant 
this past spring by the Kanawha County Commission to establish a cybersecurity innovation center at the university, which will include an academic minor in cybersecurity. Graduates of this high demand program will be well positioned to obtain and succeed in jobs related to cybersecurity, a field in which there is a very critical need. The university was also recently awarded a $1 million grant this spring through Governor Jim Justice's Workforce Expansion Program, which is designed to address the state's nursing shortage. Through West Virginia State University's award, the Department of Nursing is increasing enrollment and retention of students while providing additional professional development resources and opportunities for faculty our nursing classroom space has also been expanded to accommodate a growing number of students who want to study in this high demand field. I'd like to take a moment to recognize Dr. Mary Sizemore for her leadership and advocacy on behalf of our nursing program. Dr. Sizemore, if you're here, please stand and be recognized. Programs like nursing and cybersecurity are truly helping to meet the market demand for jobs in our state and beyond. We were also awarded a nearly $200,000 grant from the National Park Service last year as part of a program to assist in the preservation of, of historic structures on campuses of historically black colleges and universities. The grant from the National Park Service will go toward historic preservation work on Canty House in East Hall. Canty House, as you know, was built in 1923, and after serving as a private home and later a university offices, today it is home to our Sports Hall of Fame. And of course, East Hall was built in 1895, and it's the oldest building on campus, having served as a dormitory and later as the home to five West Virginia State University presidents. I want to take a moment to say thank you to Vice President and Chief of Staff, Staff Eric Jackson for his leadership in obtaining this grant. Thank you, Eric. It's a good looking picture, too. <laughs> the university received more than $1 million in grants from the United States Department of Agriculture for three research and extension projects in the fall of 2021. One award was for, was for $200,000 and was given to expand research on, on the effects that stormwater events have on water quality and greenhouse gas emissions processes in Canal River watershed. Another research project was awarded nearly $600,000 and aims to enhance resi resiliency and marketing opportunities for watermelon growers in West Virginia and the United States. Our work to elevate the impact and influence and awareness of West Virginia State University and the communities we serve continues to pay huge dividends for the university and for the citizens of West Virginia. The West Virginia State University Athletics Department, under the leadership of Athletic Director Nate Burden, played a pivotal role in the return of the success of the 61st Annual Charleston Public Courts Tennis Tournament. Over the summer, thanks to Nate's leadership, I am proud to say that the Charleston Public Courts Tennis Tournament will be a community staple for years to come. Nate, thank you for your leadership in this project and for all that you do to move our athletic program forward. Please join me in congratulating Nate. And in June, I was personally involved in the YWCA of of Charleston's campaign to end racial justice. In support of this worthy cause, I literally went over the edge and repelled one of the tallest buildings in downtown Charleston. Over the course of the last year, we have actively engaged in partnerships to benefit the university and the communities that we serve. In September, the university and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, Mid-Atlantic Region, signed a Memorandum of Understanding, the first of its kind between two organizations. This partnership will support student learning internships, career development and employment in environmental sciences 
and related fields, both at the EPA and with the surrounding organizations and communities. The university has also signed a Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU, with the West Virginia School of Osteopathic Medicine to better prepare West Virginia State students who are interested in pursuing careers in the field of osteopathic medicine. Students who successfully complete all program requirements will receive guaranteed acceptance to the School of Osteopathic Medicine. And in August, the university and the Comores Company, a global chemistry company, signed a memorandum of understanding to promote the advancement of chemistry and chemical engineering education and workforce development. As part of this partnership, Comores will provide internships and co-op opportunities for West Virginia State students and work with the university on efforts to increase interest in STEM education at the elementary and high school levels. And just this morning, we announced a new partnership with Toyota, Toyota Motor Manufacturing of West Virginia to promote STEM education to area middle school, uh, school students. This exciting new initiative will utilize our education students to help design activities that will encourage middle school age students to explore the employment possibilities available in the STEM field. West Virginia State University also partnered with three other historically black colleges and universities over the summer to create an agricultural business innovation center from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This nearly $2 million grant will establish a technical assistance hub to enhance agricultural-based business development opportunities nationwide. And in August, the university was selected by the Student Freedom Initiative to participate in its program for minority-serving institutions. Through this program, our students will have access to alternative student loan agreements, internship opportunities, tutoring, mentorship, and support services. And the university will also receive a significant in-kind donation of over $1 million to help support our IT infrastructure. Public-private partnerships are critical to the future success of the university, and developing these partnerships takes persistence and creativity. And I want to take the opportunity to recognize Trey Jones, the university's executive director of corporate and foundation relations, for his work in bringing so many of these new and exciting relationships to West Virginia State University. Which, Trey, would you please stand and be recognized? <laughs> Trey reminds me often that I need to make sure I turn up the volume. So I'm going to try to turn up the volume and, and, uh, as we move forward. Yellow Jackets have a strong tradition of competing to win not only in the classroom, but also on the field of competition. Our student athletes continue this tradition of academic and athletic excellence during the 2021-2022 season. Our, our student athletes collectively earn a cumulative, cumulative GPA of 3.1. Last year, three WVSU teams qualified for the respective NCAA Division II championships for the first time in nearly 15 years. Our women's volleyball team made its first appearance in the NCAA D2 Atlantic Regional since 2008 and advanced to the round of 32 for the first time in school history. Our men's basketball team followed suit this winter by qualifying for the NCAA Division II Atlantic Regional for the first time since 2010 and advanced to the round of 32 for only the fifth time in school history. Women's tennis made its mark in spring by winning the NCAA Division II Atlantic Region II tournament and moving on to the Sweet 16 of the NCAA Division II Women's Tennis Championship. And women's soccer completed, competed in its first full season as a member of the Mountain East Conference with resounding results, finishing in the third place in the South Division and qualifying for the Mountain East Conference Tournament. And last spring, we announced the addition of a brand new sport here at West Virginia State University in acrobatics and tumbling. 
This emerging and exciting sport is quickly adding, being added to college campuses across the country, and we are excited to be offering here at West Virginia State University. Would all of our student athletes and their coaches please stand and be recognized. As we reflect on all that we have accomplished together, we cannot rest on our laurels. The pace of change in higher education today has been swifter than ever before. We must continue to act boldly and move forward with a strong sense of urgency. We have begun the work of writing a university's strategic plan, known appropriately as Future State. Starting this past summer and over the course of the next year, we will complete our strategic planning process, a process that will be collaborative and transparent. This work will be vital to our university's future. I would like the members of the strategic plan steering committee who are here with us today to please stand and be recognized. In today's rapidly changing higher education landscape, institutions must continue to, to excel and evolve to remain relevant. And that is what we are doing here at West Virginia State University. And this afternoon, I am pleased to announce a series of initiatives that will place the university on a path to progress, prosperity, and future growth. In order to achieve our ambitious agenda, we must have set, up, set about the work of recruiting and retaining the next generation of Yellow Jackets. This year, we have a goal of reaching 2,100 full-time students. We will accomplish this goal by thinking innovatively, by embracing technology and best practice and expanding our academic offerings to reach students where they are. We will engage directly with students who have stopped out and work with them to help get them back on track to completing their degree. We will continue to grow our academic offerings in areas where we know there is a high demand, in areas such as cybersecurity, in nursing, and in engineering. And we will double down on improving our retention efforts because it does no good to bring a student here for one year only to have them leave to go elsewhere or to not continue their education at all. One way we will begin to address the student retention crisis is through the newly created Office of Student Advocate, led by Ms. Jalisa Nunez. This, uh, this new office is dedicated to helping students overcome their obstacles and, in, and to help them to create an environment in which all students will feel inspired and encouraged. In order to increase our student retention efforts, we must fully embrace customer service. And to that end, today we are launching a customer service satisfaction feedback tool, which will be accessible throughout campus. Simply by scanning this QR code, everywhere, everywhere you go on campus, you will have the opportunity to give feedback. And we will take this data and gather it and look for ways we can improve the student experience. Improving customer service must be the responsibility of every university employee and today we take another step toward reaching that very important goal. We will also continue to look for ways to improve the student experience while students on, for students on campus by including activities and experiences that are engaging and inspiring. We are working and exploring ways to expand our Greek, Greek life offerings by applying for expansion opportunities with multicultural group Greek organizations. We are also exploring adding intramur intramural teams in archery and axe drawing. Over, over time, we will increase student engagement with a thoughtful student-centered process. Along those lines, I'm excited to announce today that we will be adding several new sports teams to our athletics roster that will begin competition next year. You ready for it? <laughs> Beginning with the 2023-2024 academic year, 
We'll be adding both men and women's indoor and outdoor track and field teams. <laughs> and we'll also be adding men and women's cross country teams. We look forward to adding these six teams next year and to cheering them on to many Mountain East Conference titles in the future. Moving on to academics. While we are doing great work research that is making a tremendous impact in the agricultural field, the fact remains that West Virginia State University is the only 1890 land-grant institution without an agricultural school. And that must change. And that change will start today. I am proud to announce that we are beginning the work to bring a School of Agriculture to West Virginia State University. Clap. <laughs> today I am charging a committee to begin the work conducting a feasibility study to determine what resources would be needed to establish a School of Agriculture at our university. This committee will be chaired by Dr. Amy Smith, Vice President and Dean and Director for Agricultural Research and Extension, and I look forward to receiving the committee's final recommendations later this spring. In order to continue to grow, we will need to be bold and take advantage of new opportunities as they present themselves. One way to do that is to not only broaden our course offerings, but to also broaden our presence in the communities that we serve. This is why this afternoon I am excited to announce that West Virginia State University will be returning to downtown Charleston. The new WVSU Center will be located in the heart of downtown Charleston and will serve as a hub for social and economic mobility. Through the West Virginia State University Center, we will offer services such as our Healthy Grandfamilies Initiative, our Cybersecurity Innovation Center, and much more. Once the center is fully up and running, we will also incorporate meeting spaces where our many alumni who live and work in downtown Charleston can gather and reconnect with the university this is an exciting time in Charleston, and West Virginia State University is excited to be part of this renaissance. Growing our university will require resources, and we will continue to grow our advancement efforts to raise more money to support our scholarship efforts and to invest more money back into our university. Our fundraising goal for this year is $5 million. And while we will be working to meet this goal, this year, we will also begin preparing to launch the university's next capital campaign, only the second capital campaign in our university's history. This work will require all of us to pitch in, and I know that I have your support in helping us to achieve these huge financial undertakings. West Virginia State University is a special place. And for 131 years, this university has stood as a beacon of hope and a pathway to prosperity for thousands of students. Our university has transformed lives through excellence in education. This is not only our past, it is also our future. Our outcomes are not just measured today, but in the months and years after our students go forward from here and change the world. The work of this university is the work that changes lives and put people on the pathway toward a more prosperous future. Earlier in my address, I shared with you that it takes a village to raise a child and to sustain a university. Now I leave you with another well-known thought, and that is that tomorrow belongs to people who prepare for it today. And as I close my first state of the university address, let me assure you that we are prepared, prepared for our students, our faculty, and our staff to reach unprecedented heights, prepared to be leaders in education, both 
in West Virginia and beyond, and prepare to write the next great chapter of the extraordinary story of this incredible university. I want to thank you for the honor and the privilege to be your president. And I want you to enjoy homecoming and let's go state.